Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you the very basics of mapping. So the first thing you should do is when you get uh, when you download Radiant and install it, you should set up your project settings. So you're going to go to File, Project Settings. Your base path should lead to your base Q3 folder. Your mod, your mod should be Quake 3 mo custom Quake 3 modification unless you're mapping for Quake 3 Arena or Team Arena. Since we're mapping for a defrag, we're going to use custom Quake 3 modification. And your FS game is going to be your defrag mod, <clears throat> or whatever mod you're mapping for. So if you're using Quick3 Arena, you don't have to type in anything. If you see here, you can't type in anything because it's base Q3. So modification, defrag, OK. So once you got that done, um, you could go to Edit Preferences, and you can look through all these settings for startup auto save and all that stuff you could look into that on your own I'm not gonna get into detail with that so we're gonna press OK I'm gonna start a new map here so when you um when you first open radiant you're gonna get some you're gonna get a similar layout to this if not the exact same thing so what you see here is um, on the very left here is your height bar the uh, little blue guy here is your camera. The top right corner is your 3D camera, and the bottom right corner is your um, texture window. This this bar up here is the texture subsets. You can enable that in the uh, preferences. I'm not going to show you where. You can figure it out. It's not that hard. So we're going to get to the mapping now. We're going to go to textures. We'll use the base set. We'll do base wall, uh, base floor. It's gonna load up the textures. Now these are all the floor textures that are used for uh, base Q3. Now they're gonna look a little bit different to you because I downloaded a high res texture pack, so they may not look exactly the same for you. So to select a texture, you're gonna pick any texture. We'll use this uh, clang floor, and then you're gonna go on the 2D grid, left click, and drag and you'll make one brush. To move around in the 3D camera just uh, press right click once and if you move your mouse around you can move around. If you use arrow keys you can strafe to the left and right, up and down and you can move it around with the mouse as well. So I'm going to press control tab to switch to view once. I believe this shows the back view. We're going to drag this down to zero and uh, negative 128. Control tab once again to get the top view. Escape to deselect. So we got our starting pad here. Get some uh, wall textures. Go to base wall. Gotta let it load up. And we use this thing here. Left click, drag. Drag it out forward, press spacebar to copy it, drag this on the other side. If you hold shift and left click, you can select multiple brushes. Control tab to switch the views, drag it up. We'll set it at 320. If you see on the left here, it shows uh, the grid numbers, like this is 256, this is 320. And same for the top, you can see the uh, the grid points. This is negative 512, this is 0 right here, and this is 320 here. You don't really you don't really use these that much, you just use either the height bar or this. And when you change the views as well, you can see how far you're going. So right now it's at negative 960, but we're going to make the map much larger. So set it at, excuse me, 2176. Okay. Um, we'll make a back wall here. So we're gonna, oops, just like that. I'm gonna change the grid. I don't like working in a grid size in a small grid size. By default, it's grid eight. I like to work in a uh, grid sixteen or thirty-two. It's much easier to map in, and you're less likely to make a mistake. So I'm gonna select these. 
just adding some detail here. And that's fine. Select this spacebar to copy and paste it. Drag it down. We're going to have this as our base floor. Drag it all the way down to there. We're going to select this. Copy it to our end wall. Drag it down. We're going to select this again. Spacebar to copy. Drag it up and back. And now we have an airtight room that will not leak. And you won't have any problems when compiling. What I mean by airtight is if you have even the slightest hole in your map, it will have uh, it will cause a leak, and your map will stop compiling. What I mean by a leak is if you have a, a hole this small, which is exactly one unit. I'm sorry, two units. I'll make it one unit, which is exactly one unit. You go to grid, grid one. This is grid one. Each little box is one unit. Oops. That is one unit right there. So even if you have it by one unit, a hole by one unit, it will leak and it will compile. Your map should never be seeing this gray area right here. This gray area is the void. You don't want any leaks in your map that can be seen, that can uh, show the void. Right? So, okay. We're, since, um, back to mapping. Since, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We're using this uh, trim over here and here, which is the same height as this. I'm going to hold Control, Shift, Left Click. I'm going to select that single face. I'm going to press Mouse 3, which is the uh, mouse wheel. I'm going to press it down while it's on top of this texture, and it makes it that texture. Escape to deselect. You can see it lines up perfectly. We're going to add a player start here. Change views. We right click on a 2D grid, go to info, player start. Now as you can see, the guy's in the middle of the uh the middle of the brush. If you try to compile the map like that, when you um load the game, the 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 map won't load. It'll just lead you back to the um the main menu. So right now he's looking right. I want him to look forward, so I'm gonna press N to bring up the entity window. I'm going to press 90 so he looks forward. Now you can see he's looking forward. I press 360, he looks back to the right. 180 to the left, 270 down, and so on. So I want him looking forward. Escape to deselect. I'm going to go to textures, common. Now these uh, common textures are uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. The uh, common set of textures you use for radiant. It has triggers, you know, no draw, player clip stuff like that so I want to trigger so I'm gonna select where is it trigger uh, in yours it might be yellow I believe by default it's yellow but because all my stuff is customized it's blue so I'm gonna put the trigger right after the pad drag it up and down and to the left and the right make sure it's touching the ceilings and the walls so that the player can't go around it in any way Drag it up to the middle a little bit. Deselect. Right click on a 2D grid. Go to target. Start timer. Deselect that again. Select the trigger by sh holding shift left click. Right click that. Go to trigger. Trigger multiple. Now with that still selected, you're going to hold shift left click and select the entity. And you're going to press control K to link it. And you should now see a red arrow pointing from the trigger to the entity. Make sure you select a trigger first and then you select the entity and connect them. You cannot select entity first and then the trigger. It won't work. So we have our start timer here. We have our first pad. We're gonna make some more pads here. Press spacebar to copy it. Change the grid here. One, two, three, four spacing. It's a mediocre uh, distance I guess drag this down so we got a spacing of 4 with 64 one, two, 256 units for each pad spacebar 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 5 and 4 5 we'll make this our finishing pad so we're going to select the trigger 
This is our finishing pad, so we're going to make a start timer, stop timer here, I'm sorry. Deselect. You can also, you don't have to deselect it, you can make just a trigger multiple right now to save your time. Like a second. Trigger multiple, deselect, target, stop timer, deselect, reselect a trigger, reselect a uh, stop timer entity, control K to link it. You can see that once you hit that trigger, it's going to stop the timer. You can tell because the trigger has a red arrow being linked to the stop timer entity. You select that. We're gonna we'll make a teleporter. I'll show you multiple ways of doing this: uh, teleporter and kill triggers. We're gonna copy the floor, bring it up, deselect. Oh, not deselect it. Make that a trigger. Um, uh, I'll 